So let's start with the Houthis and the Saudis trying to broker this permanent ceasefire. There are Houthi demands lifting the blockade completely, the airport, open the airport, the ports and pay salaries. Are they going to get what they want from the Saudis in order to push this forward? Uh, well, Becky, as you rightly pointed out, uh, the good news seems to be rolling and mm. I hope that they continue to do so. Um, I've been asked regularly, uh, is this the end of the war? Um, mm. The short answer is it is the beginning, hopefully, uh, uh, of the mm. end. Um, certainly, this is a trust building uh, uh, exercise. Um, the negotiation started uh, as early as 2018. But certainly, as you pointed out uh, in the mm. intro, uh, there the uh, rapprochement between uh, Iran uh, and Saudi Arabia really helped expedite. Uh, these are the two regional uh, superpowers mm. uh, in the in the Middle East. This really helped expedite uh, this prisoner uh, swap. And hopefully, if all goes well, the swap starts on the 13th, and all 887 prisoners will be home in time for Eid. Yeah, well, that will be something. This proxy war, and let's call it that, this conflict in Yemen is just a very good and a, a terrible but good example of the proxy conflicts that have been playing out now for you know, some time across this region. The regional rivalry, some call it religious rivalry, but let's call it regional rivalry between Saudi and, and Iran has been really at sort of the backbone of quite a lot of the disorder and conflict that we've seen across this region. Um, what does Saudi Arabia coming to the table with Iran and tell us about what is going on around this region? Because this really is a region in a, I want to say not a state of flux, but at, a, at an inflection point for sure. Oh, absolutely. Uh, first of all, it's important to point out that the prisoner swap and the extension of the truth of the truce is a, a deal between the legitimate government of uh, Yemen and uh, the Houthis. What the uh, Saudis and the Iranians are doing, as well as Oman and mm. the United Arab Emirates, are playing the role of guarantors and putting in their weight mm. behind these deals. Uh, but if we rewind to the 10th uh, uh, of uh, uh, April, uh, we have 10th of March, sorry, when the uh, Beijing agreement was uh, was announced. Uh, a Saudi senior Saudi source sat with a number of journalists and explained, went into a little bit of uh, details. Mm. The agreement does include uh, a, a, a mutual commitment to non-aggression or supporting other parties uh, mm -hmm. uh, in aggression against uh, any, uh, any of the two countries, Saudi and Iran. So that's a, a very important uh, development. And, um, of course, while the Iranians will never admit, perhaps for legal reasons, uh, that they are backing the Houthis or supporting or supplying mm -hmm. the Houthis with weapons, what we are seeing today is definitely a sign that uh, Iran carries weight uh, a little mm -hmm. bit, uh, at least a little bit with the, with the Houthis. But as I said in the very beginning, mm -hmm. the, the deal is between the Yemeni government and the Houthis. Let's be quite clear. The Iranian, there are, the malign behavior of the Iranian um, uh, proxies around this region is real, uh, has been for years. Um, however much we can debate how, you know, how, how aligned the Houthi movement is with Iran, we've certainly seen um, support for other actors around this region, not least Hezbollah, for example, in Lebanon and Hezbollah in Syria. So let's just step back for a moment and consider what the opportunities are should this rapprochement you know, hold for this wider region. And I'm looking outside of Saudi Arabia, outside of, uh, of Yemen, and talking about Iraq, Lebanon, Syria, for example. Well, look, uh, the mere fact that the uh, return of diplomatic ties has now been agreed, the mere fact that mm. the Saudis and the Iranians can now sit and talk together, mm. um, I'm not sure if the most optimistic scenario that we will see a complete Iranian withdrawal from the countries you mentioned, mm. from Iraq or Syria or Lebanon, where Hezbollah has been you know, deeply rooted since 1982. Um, that's just not going to happen. But what will happen now is because the two major powers in the region can sit together uh, and talk, uh, this can help uh, de-escalate. This can help re achieve reasonable uh, solutions for, and uh, most importantly, reduce the tension and the grievance of, uh, uh, of the people in these uh, countries. Yemen has a lot to win being a neighbor of uh, the GCC. As soon as a peace deal, uh, a permanent peace deal is struck, I'm quite sure that uh, it will start reaping some economic and development uh, assistance from uh, the GCC. And at the heart of this rapprochement and, you know, the kingdom will wear this on its sleeve, is its economic interests. And we are seeing 
the move from sort of, you know, robust foreign policy, the, the sort of flexing of muscles in foreign policy to, to a policy that of, of diplomacy across this region from here in the UAE as well, which serves economic interests. What will, what could um, hurt or ensure that this deal between the Saudis and Iranians fail? What, what, what would Tehran or the kingdom need to do <laughs> effectively uh, to, to see this as a failure? I mean, ha, ha, you know, what's the possibility that this doesn't work, I guess, is what I'm saying. Well, look, uh, there's always a possibility that uh, it doesn't work. And technically, there are three scenarios that could happen. Mm. The most pessimistic is we stay where we are. Mm. And you know what? Uh, as Saudi Arabia and other countries in the region, We've had 40 years dealing with this uh, regime and the byproducts uh, of this regime. And, you know, the defenses are up. And I don't think, as we said last time, mm -hmm. nobody's going to blink uh, during this, uh, this uh, period. We're very clear-eyed uh, mm -hmm. about what's at uh, risk here. But if it doesn't succeed, then we just go back to the status quo. And, you know, we have been developing, we have been growing despite. What would be a shame is the missed opportunity. And of course, uh, Iran would have upset a major uh, superpower in the world, which is uh, China, which is the guarantor mm -hmm. and the mediator uh, in this. And, you know, China has committed to 300 billion, with a B, uh, in investments in Iran over the mm -hmm. next 25 years. I do not think the Iranians want to walk away uh, with them, although they have done unreasonable things in, in the past. Um, the most optimistic scenario, we talked about it earlier, that we wake up one day and all of these mm -hmm. uh, issues are resolved and Iran decides mm -hmm. to withdraw. Uh, I would think that the more realistic scenario is what's happening now is restoration of diplomatic ties, uh, supporting the legitimate governments uh, in, uh, on the ground, supporting uh, peace talks between warring parties uh, mm -hmm. in, in Yemen, because this is a, 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 a deal that has to happen between them for it to be sustainable. 